Today, I wanted to talk about some of the expenses you have as an algo trading. What type of monthly ongoing expenses you can expect if you wanna get into algo trading. Now, there's not a lot of expenses with algo trading. Honestly, you'll probably have a maximum of three, probably two. So it's not a super intense business in terms of you know trading your own capital. You're not gonna be spending a ton of money with expenses, but do expect that there is some type of expenses, especially since you're using software and other you know software products. The first expense I wanted to talk about is your data expense. So when you're trading on public markets, you need to get data. You want to know the most recent price of S&P 500 futures, or maybe the most recent price of gold. And to get that data, you have to go through usually a vendor, someone that takes the data from the exchanges, all the traded prices, and can easily send it to you uh, so you can use to build a trading system. Now for me personally, I pay over $200 a month in data fees. I'm trading as a corporation, so it's a bit higher than what a retail trader may expect to pay. Uh, so don't get too discouraged. As a retail trader, if I traded personally, I'd be paying probably around $20 a month in data fees, okay? So I have two subscriptions, uh, two Kinetic subscriptions, and uh, Kinetic is my data provider, if you didn't know. I also have a third subscription with CQG, uh, which is another data provider for one of my personal accounts. And uh, all together, I pay about $200 a month for those data fees. And that allows me to get real-time prices, um, news events, volume, um, you know, bid ask, level one, level two, all that sort of stuff. So that's sort of all bundled into that price. But if you're a retail trader watching this, you know, say you're trading just under your personal name, I uh, expect to pay anywhere from on the low end, I would say $10 a month, uh, upwards to 20 or $30 a month. The reason mine, the, the reason why mine is so much higher is because number one, I'm trading as a professional. So when you trade as a professional, as a company, uh, you get to charge more in fees. I'm not sure why, I think it's because uh, data vendors probably regulated, they have to charge more for professional corporations versus retail. So you will pay more if you pay under, or, or if you trade under um, an LLC or a corporation. And number two is I have multiple data subscriptions. So usually how data fees work is they only operate on one device, one computer, right? If you try and connect to your data feed on another computer, number one, it'll either boot you off from your previous computer uh, or it just simply won't allow you. it. So I have two data subscriptions, one for my dev environment uh, where I back test trading systems, um, build new trading systems. So I need a data feed for that computer uh, so I can quickly back test. Uh, and once again, I use NinjaTrader, which is the platform I use to code, build, and test my automated trading systems. Also tip, if you're looking to learn more about automated trading, check the links in the description below uh, and you can work with me. So I have a dev, dev subscription and then I also have another subscription on my live server. Um, so I'm paying twice because you have to pay per device. That's how it works. So uh, I am paying double. And then I, I also have a personal account as well. And I have another, another data subscription with that, uh, which I believe is about $12 a month, something around that. So I'm, I guess I'm technically paying $212 a month uh, for data fees. Once again, if you're a retail trader, you know, my numbers are different because I'm trading professionally. Uh, but if you're a retail trader, um, expect to pay anywhere from 10 to $20 a month for data fees. It could be higher depending on some platforms. It will be higher if you have multiple devices, but sort of the base expect to pay um, around that. You can get data for free from some brokerages. For example, TD Ameritrade, I believe if you deposit a certain amount, I can't recall, I think it's either a thousand to $3,000, uh, you will get data for free. Um, but you're forced to work with TD Ameritrade and you're forced to be on their platform. So that's kind of up to your discretion. Uh, personally, I'm not a huge fan of them, but there is some platforms where uh, it's sort of free, if, if you will, with the caveat that you usually have to deposit money and put a, you know, a decent amount in there. But most big brokerages like NinjaTrader, TradeStation, Interactive Brokers uh, will charge you uh, a monthly data fee uh, so they can give you rapid data fast and relatively reliable as well. So that's the first biggest cost, data fees. The second biggest cost is your platform. So if you're building automated trading systems, you're either coding your own platform from scratch or you're using an existing platform. And you guys all know me, I highly recommend you use an existing platform. It's going to save you a lot of time with dealing with infrastructure, 
and it's gonna allow you to test and build and run automated trading systems a lot quicker because those existing platforms have already handled all the broker connections and the reconnection uh, logic, uh, the charting logic, all that sort of stuff. So I highly recommend using existing platform. You wanna focus as a trader on getting returns, right, as soon as possible. So you wanna mitigate the amount of time that you're spending on infrastructure or tasks that aren't gonna make you money. And using existing platforms uh, is the way to go. So if you're building your own platform from scratch, right, you're gonna have a labor cost, definitely, if you know how to code it, there's gonna be a lot of time, right, expect three to six months to get something working, um, or you're gonna have to pay someone to build that platform, uh, which will be obviously very expensive. So I won't really talk about that because I don't think that'll apply to most people, but that would be a cost. Now, if you're using an existing platform, you have a lot of options. So NinjaTrader, for example, which is once again, the platform I use, has a couple different uh, pricing options. Um, if you sign up as a brokerage account with them, you get to use the software for free. So if you sign up with NinjaTrader as a brokerage account, you deposit money, uh, you can trade. Uh, other than the data fees that you have to pay, you'll pay anywhere from 10 to $20 a month. You can pretty much trade for free, if you will. Uh, of course, there's gonna be commissions uh, they're gonna have to pay, but there's no monthly cost. There's no ongoing monthly cost or no upfront cost, I guess, other than depositing your money with the NinjaTrader brokerage. A cheap option to get into automated trading is signing up with the NinjaTrader brokerage account. Now, if you want to use other brokerages with NinjaTrader, say you wanna connect to your interactive brokers account or maybe another offshore brokerage, you will have to pay the multi-broker license fee with NinjaTrader and that's $99 a month. So if you wanna use that brokerage other than NinjaTrader, you're gonna to have to pay that monthly $99 a month um, to trade with them. It's unfortunate for me and us Canadians, um, if you're not aware, I am Canadian, um, I, Canadians cannot sign up for the NinjaTrader brokerage account. They don't accept Canadians, uh, but NinjaTrader does accept a lot of international countries. I'm not sure why it's Canada, but they don't accept Canadians. So Canadians are sort of forced to sign up for the multi-broker license um, unless they can get access to a NinjaTrader brokerage account, maybe through a partnership or a corporation. But as a personal trader, unfortunately you can't. So you're kind of forced to that monthly fee. So as a platform cost for month for most platforms, it's usually, there's usually no cost. As long as you deposit money and you're trading, you know, you're paying them commissions uh, and they're happy with that and the data charges. So NinjaTrader, you know, just to summarize, there's pretty much no cost if you can sign up as a brokerage account. For the few countries that you can't sign up as a brokerage account, you will have to pay that multi-broker license of $99 a month. Other platforms, TradeStation, for example, uh, there's no upfront payment. You just have to deposit money and then pay your data fees. So uh, there's no platform cost. Quant Connect, um, I believe there's a monthly cost. It depends on how fast you want the, because Quant, Quant Connect's a little different because it actually runs on the cloud, where NinjaTrader and TradeStation are just desktop applications. Uh, so Quant Connect, there is a monthly fee depending on how how powerful you want your cloud computer to be, um, but you can probably expect to pay anywhere from twenty to thirty dollars a month uh, as I say a, a starter platform. So, platform cost is going to be your next expense if there is any. Sometimes there isn't. Like I said, with NinjaTrader and TradeStation, if you can just deposit money, uh, there's no monthly fee or upfront cost. And um, uh, other platforms, especially on the cloud, expect to pay uh, a monthly fee, and that can range probably anywhere from twenty to hundred dollars a month. The third cost you're going to have is uh, <clears throat> the third cost you're going to have is a VPS. So a VPS stands for Virtual Private Server, and it's basically a remote computer running remotely. Okay, and the reason why you want a VPS, you don't have to have a VPS. You could run your trading systems on your local computer, right? Which would mitigate that cost completely. But the problem is a lot of people probably work and they don't want their trading systems running on their computer while they're working. Um, they want more reliability. You know, personally, why I wanted a VPS was I wanted the reliability. You know, what if my internet or power goes out, my trading systems are, you know, essentially not gonna be running for that period of time. That could cost me money. It could make me money as well. It depends on the scenario, but I never wanna go through that. Obviously, you know, I have a pretty reliable connection with, at home and my power on, rarely goes out, if ever, but I want that sense of you know, security and confidence that you know, if I put this on VPS, on AWS or Azure, it's always running, right? And I have that confidence. So 
A VPS most of the time is something I'd recommend, but you don't have to have it. You could run it on your computer and still work on it. Or if you have a second computer, you could just put your systems on that and, and run that uh, on your, you know, at home. So a VPS is sort of, I'd recommend it. It's not required though. So a VPS, once again, is a remote computer and usually you have to pay a monthly fee. It's usually a scalable plan. So the more powerful you want your computer, that will relate to how much you're gonna pay. So with AWS, for example, if you want eight gigs of RAM or 16 gigs of RAM and a four, you know, a four core processor, uh, you're gonna be paying more. So personally, what I pay, I pay about $100 a month for two VPSs. I have a dev server uh, where I run a lot of my trading systems in a SIM account to kind of monitor their performance. And then I have a live server uh, that runs with real money uh, and sort of my live portfolio. So I'm paying two VPS costs. They equate to $50 a month, which would, you know, if you add them both up, that's $100 a month. And I use Amazon Web Services, AKA AWS, to run my trading systems. Um, if you don't know how to set up a VPS or what it is, I have a separate YouTube video uh, at the top right you can click and that will help you uh, set up a VPS. Also in my course, I have um, how to set up a VPS with Azure and other uh, AWS products. Uh, so that may help you as well. So VPSs, once again, I, I'd recommend just because you're gonna have that confidence and reliability that you have you know, a computer running um, at the fastest speeds possible in the most secure location possible and um, not locally. But you know, I do have some trading friends that run their trading systems on their local computer or they have a second computer that maybe is in another office uh, that's running all the time. So that could work as well, but I highly recommend a VPS if you wanna really take this seriously. The bonus cost you're gonna have being a algo trader running automated trading systems is commissions. Every time you make a trade on a public market, you're, you're paying commissions. Now there is some brokerages that have no commissions for stocks. So, you know, it may vary, but if you're trading futures like I am, you're gonna be paying commissions. I pay, I believe it's $2 for a full trade that's in and out uh, per trade with most futures contracts. You know, gold and oil, I think are a little bit higher. But if you're trading indices, um, those are sort of the commissions you're gonna pay. Obviously your monthly cost for commissions heavily varies. It depends how much contracts you're trading. You know, I'm, I'm paying anywhere from a thousand to $2,000 a month in commissions. And there's not really a way to get around that. Um, you just, it's the cost of doing business. You know, if you want to make a trade on a public market, you're gonna have to pay that commission. So you will pay commissions, but it's not, it is an ongoing monthly cost if you're making trades, but if you're not making trades, it's not a cost. So sort of, you just kind of have to think of it as a cost of doing business and it is what it is and just kind of suck it up. You could shop around at different brokerages, but the competition is so tight nowadays that you're not going to be saving much. Uh, unless you're trading vast amounts. If you're trading really heavy, if you're trading 10 to $100,000 contracts a month, definitely look at Interactive Brokers. They have a nice um, tiered system where the more contracts you trade, you save more. But uh, pretty much for most of you watching, um, you know, you won't be saving much trying to shop around and just the cost of doing business. I hope you guys found value in this video and you learned some about the expenses with automated trading. These expenses, in the net net are pretty low for how much opportunity you can make with automated trading, but it's important to know and to expect them. Automated trading is not free. Algo trading is not free. You're gonna have to pay some something to get it running, right? Either whether it's software, data fees, um, remote VPSs, uh, and of course, always you'll be paying commissions for each trade. So anyways, I hope you found value in this video. Let me know in the comments below what your expenses are for automated trading and maybe I'll make a spreadsheet and show you guys mine, um, but it's the cost of doing business and just, you know, learn to expect it. And as long as you can, as long as you know, coming up front, you have that expectation that, hey, I'm gonna be paying these automated trading costs. It, it'll kind of fall to the wayside and you can focus on building portfolios. Have a good one and we'll see you next week.